Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sobel and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have a treat for you. We're going to be making spiral bread and it's a yeast bread that actually has a spiral running through it. So half the bread dough is white bread dough and the other half is whole wheat with a little bit of molasses that you don't taste but it gives it a nice color and it's got fiber and it's super healthy. So if you're trying to get fiber into your family, this is the bread for you. The first thing I did is I heated up just until tepid, about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, three cups of milk, any type of milk you want. I did five tablespoons of olive oil and a third of a cup of granulated sugar. And I just heated it and stirred it until that sugar dissolved. And it's perfect temperature. I've already dipped my finger in it. So if you feel like you could take a comfortable little bath in there, if you don't have a thermometer, perfect, okay? In my electric mixer, I have three cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add one tablespoon of instant yeast. That's fast-rising yeast, one tablespoon. That's a lot of yeast, but we're gonna need it. One tablespoon of kosher salt. And we're gonna put that on just till it blends together. This bread is such a treat, you're gonna love it. And it makes two loaves, so you can eat one now and freeze one. Perfect. So once we get that going, we're going to add our wet ingredients. Remember, they should not be hot. Yeast die at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so be careful. So with the motor going, and you wanna be careful, get a saucepan if you can, that has a little bit of a lip to it so you don't dribble it everywhere. And I'm just gonna pour it in here. Remember, this is nice and warm. And it's gonna look like well, it's going to look like pancake batter, so it's not going to look like a dough yet, so don't get discouraged. It's not supposed to. It's going to be a little sloshy. I like to say it's a little sloshy because it's going to be, you know, loose. So pour that in gradually. All right, you hear the sloshing? That's why I say it's sloshy. Pour it all in. There you go. You can hear the sloshing. Let it slosh. Slosh away, and then I'm going to stop it for a second and just push down on that paddle to get the thicker pieces of the batter, because it is a batter now, it's not a dough. I promise you when we're done, it'll be a dough. I'm going to get that in there. All right, and then we're just going to put it on low speed again. This makes about five cups of batter. All right, or pre-dough. So we're done here. And it's not totally the prettiest thing, so don't worry. We will make it pretty. So I'm gonna bring my paddle and bring it into the sink. We don't need it anymore. And again, this makes about five cups. So I have a big four cup measuring cup. I'm gonna put about two and a half cups in here. So let me turn my measuring cup so I can see it. And I'm going to put half, so two and a half cups is about half, or you can eyeball it. All right, so I have two and a half cups of batter. This is going to be my whole wheat molasses batter, and I'm going to put that aside for later. And then in here, I have my, I have my, uh, my, my two and a half cups that's left over. Here it is, here it is. It's right in front of me. Do you ever lose an ingredient and it's right in front of you? So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour to the batter that you originally had, all right? This is going to turn into a dough, all right? So can you see that? If you can't see it, don't be shy. Take a look in the bowl. And we're going to knead this. We're gonna actually wait until the flour absorbs all the liquid, the butter. And this is known as a rich yeast dough because it's got milk in it, it's got some fat in it, albeit oil, olive oil is very good for you. And it also has a little bit of sugar just to sort of get the yeast going, but it's by no means a sweet, bread. It is not. It's great for sandwiches or you could do French toast. 
So it's looking pretty shaggy, right? So I'm going to get it out of the bowl. Don't worry about the shagginess. It'll come together. All right. Don't worry. Have faith. Have faith. All right. I have not let you down. I have never let you down. All right. So you get your trusty bench, bench scraper and you just sort of bring it together. If at any point you have not measured properly or, you know, you put a little less milk or a little too much milk, you can always adjust. But I'm really going to try to tell you not to use too much flour. If you do need something to moisten the dough, I would use a few drops of olive oil, which I have in this handy pitcher in case I need it. And I mean only a few drops. We already added five tablespoons, so we really don't want to add too much. But I promise you, now it's coming together. So I'm going to put my bench scraper down and I'm just going to start kneading the dough. Now, this is what I call, not only is it spiral dough, but it sort of does two things at once. You're sort of exercising, all right? Because I'm getting my biceps and my triceps exercise. I can feel it. So this is a great workout. Get all your scraps of dough. See how it's coming together? Look, look, look. It's not shaggy looking anymore. All right, like your sheepdog. It's coming together. And again, if you really feel like it's sticking too much and you want it to be a little less sticky, I'll show you what you do. You just put a little, just a drop. Just a drop. All right, and sort of get that going around there. All right. And then it just sort of helps everybody slide along on that work surface. Knead it until it gets a little bit smoother, a little bit more elastic, all right? It's sort of fun. Give it a few minutes. And then once it starts looking less shaggy and smooth and elastic, all right, and you're a little out of breath because you've exercised while you're baking, all right? You want to grab a bowl, a good sized bowl. You want to grease it with either nonstick cooking spray or a few drops of oil. Rub it around, all right? And then you're going to put this beautifulness, that's our white dough, into a bowl, which I've already sprayed. Put it in. Wipe it around the bottom. Flip it over so the grease side is up. And then I'm going to take some plastic wrap and I'm going to put it over the top and you want to cover it so there's no air coming out. You can even use a clean kitchen towel and then you're going to let this rest for one hour and it's going to double in size. Trust me. I'm going to put it over here and we're not done. We have the rest of our dough to make. Two and a half cups of white whole wheat flour. I use white whole wheat flour because it's a little bit less weedy tasting and my family tends to uh, not resist whole wheat items if I use it. But it has great fiber. Three tablespoons molasses. I'm going to put molasses into the two and a half cups of batter that I had. All right, I'm just going to move that around a little bit, just whisk it up or mix it in with whatever you got, spoon, whatever. All right, and then you're going to put it into your, and see how I have a few lumps? Don't let those lumps upset you. It will go away. So we're just going to put that in there. See how this batter's got a different color? It's almost like orangey brown. All right, and that's what we're going for. We want a spiral bread so you can see the different spirals. So if you can see how I'm just mixing this in, again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're making another dough. So we're turning a batter into a dough, all right? Now, I ran a children's baking course for many, many years. And we used to make this spiral bread almost every summer and we used to make two loaves so when kids worked in pairs each kid got to take home an entire loaf and you know what the next day I, they brought their lunches and the next day i saw so many 
spiral loaf sandwiches. All different fillings, PBJ to chicken salad, tuna salad, turkey, all with my spiral bread recipe. And I thought that was so cool. It made me so happy that they enjoyed it. All right, again, dump that beautifulness onto the table with all your, all your leftover shaggy, shaggy batter. Make sure you scrape the rubber spatula or the spoon or whatever you're using, all right? Put this in the sink. Get your trusty bench scraper and start flipping it over so you can start getting this shagginess smooth and elastic. All right. So we have our other dough rising already. And this is going to join. So the white dough is going to join the spiral dough. So here we go. I'm going to start gathering it together. All right. Again, no flour. Do not use any extra flour. Before I went to culinary school, I used to flour everything. So if I needed extra flour, I just really, you know, sort of dumped it on the work surface. And my breads were really dry. And I decided, uh, what am I doing wrong? So as I started baking more and more, uh, not only this straight dough, because it's not a sourdough, it's called a straight dough, I realized I don't want dry bread anymore. So I think I made a bread once that was... It was like a football. <laughs> it's really dense. And I will tell you, breads with some whole wheat flour in them, and this has two and a half cups, so it's about half whole wheat. It'll be a little bit denser, but because it's got a lot of white flour in it too, the all-purpose, it's still gonna be nice and light. It's gonna be a nice balance. So I'm getting a little sticky, so I'm going for the olive oil. I'm just gonna put a few drops on. Okay, that's all you need. It's all you need to knead it. Get it? All you need to knead it. And again, look at the muscles I'm getting. I'm telling you, if you become a baker and you make a lot of yeast doughs like this, you will get great muscles. You don't have to go to the gym. You just have to bake and eat it in moderation. It's fun. All right, so we're smooth and elastic. You see it? Looks gorgeous. Sprayed bowl, okay? Nonstick cooking spray. Put it in, make sure the bowl's big enough so it can actually uh, increase in size. Grease side up, done. Cover it and give it an hour. All right, give it an hour. Okay, baby, you rise. I wash my hands. I have doughs already risen. And it's so much fun to shape them. Just wait till you see how to shape them. Now there's one thing I am going to do and I'm gonna show you. You see this? I'm gonna need this. I'm actually gonna use it. So I'm gonna scrape down my work surface because there's little bits of my whole wheat dough, there's little bits of the white dough, there's little bits of flour. I wanna scrape it down so I don't feel any sharp or hard pieces, because I don't want them in my finished dough. And then I'm gonna actually wash this. Just rinse it with water, or soap and water if you wanna. Because I need to cut the doughs in half, we're making two loaves. I'm telling you, when my kids know that I'm making this, this bread, they're like, okay, they start stocking up on peanut butter and jelly. Um, we, we have to have a sandwich night. I mean, they go absolutely nuts. And I have to tell you, my kids are grown up. <laughs> they're still like that. So it's good, it's all good. You're gonna enjoy this. This recipe is also in my book, Baking with Success, amongst many other recipes. All right, are you ready? Look at her! This is my white dough, double in size. Wow. This is my whole wheat dough, double in size, okay? All right, here we go. 
There was a movie years ago called The Blob when I was little, and this is what it reminds me of because it's so big and so full of carbon dioxide because of the yeast and the fermentation process. This is wonderful. It's a beautiful science experiment. Okay. So what I have done is I have sprayed a nine and a half by five and a half by three inch high loaf pan. Just take any loaf pan you have, but a good size loaf pan. You're going to need two of them. And I've greased it and gotten it ready. I have two of them. And I'm going to take my white dough first and I'm just going to let it sort of fall out. Come on out. Miss Doe, and I'm going to cut her in half, okay? But it won't hurt her because, see, I don't want to deflate it too much. I don't want to handle it too much. A lot of people like to put their fingers through it and mash it around a little bit. If you do that, you're going to create a very tight gluten network, and you're not going to be able to shape it, so don't do it. So I'm just going to eyeball it, cut her in half. That's why I actually had to clean this. Cut straight down, you don't want to rip. I'm gonna put her in here for later. See you in a little bit. Okay? We're gonna shape her. And this is what I'm gonna do. I have a measuring stick here that is about 12 inches long. All right? Now, I'm not gonna go that long. Whatever loaf pan you use, you want to get to about the length of that loaf pan. So if it's nine and a half inches long, maybe go 10 or a little bit longer and that's it. So I have a rolling pin, but I'm usually going to use my knuckles. Okay, so I'm going to use my knuckles. I'm going for a rectangular shape. And we're going to put the white dough on the bottom. Okay, see how I already have a rectangular shape? Can you see that? It's beautiful. Can you see it? It is, you want it perfectly rectangular, as humanly possible as perfect can be, meaning we're not perfect. And I'm going to just sort of roll it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take my pan and I'm going to put my pan next to it. So I'm going to show you, and I'm going to do this backwards so you can see. So you see this? So my pan. It's about as long as my pan, and it's important that it be only a little bit longer than my pan. It's very important. I'll show you why. Because how you shape this is going to determine the beauty of your bread and how pretty it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you, you beautiful thing. I'm going to move you over, okay, over here. We'll reshape a little bit, don't worry because we have to do our whole wheat one now. So let's get our beautiful whole wheatness. Yes, beautiful. Look at that beautiful carbon dioxide stuck in there, all those beautiful, beautiful carbon dioxide. I can smell the whole wheat and I can smell the molasses cut in half. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Remember, cut, never rip, put half in there. Use your knuckles. You're gonna to try to get the same length and width as your white dough. All right. All right, so about eight inches wide and no more than 12, but remember I said go a little bit less. Gently, the dough is stretchy, so you can gently show it who's boss, you know what I mean? So if you need to get it a little bit more on one side than the other, and use your rolling pin. Sort of boop, 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 you know what I mean? So you actually can get a rectangle. You want as perfect a rectangle as possible. Get your pan, all right, about right. I'm only gonna shape one for you because now that you know how to do one, you can do, you can do the other. So, we're gonna get that. I'm gonna bring back our white dough back by popular demand and if it has morphed a little bit go back and actually reshape a little bit make sure you measure so it's a little bit bigger than the pan all right okay now you put your 
pulley on top of the white. And if it's not perfect, make it fit perfectly. So you see the layer? You see how I'm actually making sure this is as long as that. Make sure it covers every bit of the white. Make sure it fits. Make sure it fits. Make sure it fits. Push down a little bit. Okay, now the fun part. Sort of lift it up. Lift it up. You don't need to seal them. They're gonna be beautiful. You're going to roll real tight, like you're trying to roll a towel. All right, so you're gonna roll real tight. The more layers you have, the prettier it is. And who doesn't like pretty bread? So we're gonna roll it. And if you see, see how this whole wheat is coming out? Sort of tuck it in. Sort of tuck it in, Paul. Pull. The kids used to have so much fun doing this. And you're just gonna roll it. And make sure you sort of keep it rectangular. You don't wanna see any morphing of sizes or shapes. You want no funky shapes, okay? And try to keep to the size. Don't stretch it out. See what I'm doing now? The most important part, see how I'm rolling it all the way up? You want the seam side. You see this? This is the seam side. You don't have to pinch it. You don't have to do anything to it. Just make sure the seam side is down. All right? Now, it's a little bit longer than my pan. So what I'm going to do is just going to give it a little boop, boop. All right? Now watch. You can see it's slightly longer than the pan, but watch how I tuck it in. I call it tucking the baby into bed. And you're going to tuck in the middle first, and then you tuck both sides down, 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 and then straighten it out. So straighten it out. See what I'm doing? Straighten it out. It's literally like putting your baby to bed, all right? And you wanna make sure it's centered in there because the prettier it looks now, the prettier it's gonna bake. And you're gonna give it, you're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and you're gonna give it another hour. And then you're gonna bake it at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna double in size before you bake it. And you're gonna bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. It's gonna get gorgeous. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm so excited. All right, one more hand wash. I have a fully baked one ready for you, and I'm gonna cut into it, and that's the, my favorite part, because you get to see the swirls. You get to see the swirls, I love it. So get yourself a really nice cutting board. Now watch. You see it? Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I love it, I love it. See on both sides? So I'm gonna cut down the middle so you can see how gorgeous this thing is. Use a serrated knife. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That spiral bread. I love it! So go make yourself some spiral bread and make yourself some spiral bread sandwiches. I guarantee you will not buy sandwich bread again, all right? I hope you become a subscriber. There's many more videos on my YouTube channel. Until next time.